that's telling me that Facebook can see yeah. us and the YouTubes can see us waiting for them. So anyway, I told the guy, you don't need two eyes to read, so shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, that was a good story. I'm sorry that folks missed the, the best part of it, but I, I'm mm -hmm. wondering as I'm looking at goes. my looking at all my deets, seeing how Looks like we got folks loading in on the Facebook side of things and soon to be on the YouTube. There we go. Tell me, friends, if you are um, able to hear us and see right. our We're Starting Soon bit of business. Um, we're, I'm broadcasting today from a different space, and so it creates all manner of interesting opportunity to uh to mess things up looking good i am as i sort out our um chat view um how is everybody doing how are you doing crystal how are you doing steve i know we're kind of hanging back sort of waiting for me to see yeah. chat and stuff i'm pandemic okay <laughs> i like that yeah. designation that makes a heck of a lot of sense honestly yeah yeah pandemic all right here too i dig it i dig it okay. folks if you can hear Oh, good, good, good. Oh, Alex Thomas says, I can hear now that I unmuted the Facebook tab. <laughs> good deal, good deal. It's the, it's the seance experience. Can you hear us? Can Is anyone you here? hear us? Give us a sign. Are you there, audience? It's us, Mutant Semester Minds Monday. Let's... That explains why I keep vomiting up cheesecloth. Right? Wow, I don't know what that means, but uh, oh, I do. Someday we're going to have this set up so that uh, you can hear the music. I was talking to Steve while we were setting things up, and uh, mm -hmm. I just love it so much. It's kind of a cocktails at four kind of vibe. Oh, great. Well, then we'll start with beer. Hello, everybody. <laughs> I see Sean Vieira. I see Nathan's here. Apook is here. You can hear music, James. You can hear music and voices. I'm looking at you, James Bentley. You make life very entertaining. I am the bartender, Liz Kortz. Uh, today, we're having a Cuba Libra. I don't even know what that is. I could, I could be serving you a live snake, a live venomous snake. Thank you. Uh, again. I, again. Nice. Exactly. We're going to turn that down. Dry Martini says Nate Robbins. Sure. Okay. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Folks, can you hear uh, the lovely Crystal Frazier and the also lovely um, hey, Steve Kenton? Crystal Frazier, you got. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> And she, music is louder than voices. Okay, um, we're gonna just we're just okay. gonna take that media source down because you know you need to hear that. Uh, Alex Thomas says would like a a virgin vodka on the rocks, please. Hmm, what's and a virgin? Water? Yeah, is that <laughs> excellent? So they can hear us, they can see us. Here we are. It's Mutants and Masterminds Monday, and today we are talking. Well, you know. We have reached ever higher heights with the Patreon. Folks have uh, uh, joined. We have new people that joined over the weekend. Um, really excited about that. And there was a vote, and folks voted for 
a particular group of people. Now, it might not have been our, our personal favorites. They're cool nonetheless, and especially since you voted for them, friends. But um, but we kind of talked about what we're going to, you know, we do have one more release with the Zions. Yeah, we're not going to say. We're not going to forget mm-hmm. the big guy. But um, yeah, who's up next? I mean, today we are releasing Professor Psy, who the whole Psy family is named for, and also the creepy guy who decided his genes needed to be passed down through as many people as possible, and Mm-hmm. And basically knocked up a bunch of his, his students in his college classes. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Little creeper. Yeah, and then did, yeah, yeah. didn't he do something, like he was, he did something kind of, well, presumed to have done something kind of nefarious to the parents of some of the kids. Yeah, that's kind of implied. <laughs> it's kind of implied they got a little too free-willed and mm-hmm. had to go. But it's fine now because he loves his grandchildren and he'll support them no matter what. Sounds like we're having. Um, mm-hmm. So, with Steve and with Troy, that would be me and Steve. Uh, Crystal and Steve are echoing. Okay. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Hang on one second while we fix that. I don't know why it would do that, but. Mm-hmm. It's such a picture of Troy rapidly running around a room, flipping switches and turning dials. And... That's exactly. rapidly running in a hamster wheel. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm doing both, actually. It's so weird. Right. Hard to do. Powers the whole system. It really does. Uh, folks are saying, okay, just minor, some folks say, but uh, we'll, we'll kind of play around a little bit. I'm wondering. Um, yeah, it's doubled. Right, right. We're, we're working on that. Um, Apuk, uh, let me know if... The changes that I've made have fixed a thing um, while we do, um, while we continue this conversation. So, yeah, so that guy, uh, uh, Professor Sion, uh, yeah. kind he's of uh, yucky. He's creepy yeah. ringleader of the Sion family. He's, he's yep. the mastermind in the Mutants and Masterminds. I mean, he's not the mastermind. You'll find, you'll find mastermind in the threat report. Right. Gotcha. He's a mastermind. He's, he's a, 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 yes. <laughs> Gotcha. Okay, great. So when there are, when we talk about mutants and also masterminds, he would yeah, fall into the both in some he's, ways. Yeah, he is a mutant and a mastermind. He so is kind of getting two for one. See, right. and that is the kind of value you get here uh, at Mutants and Masterminds Monday. So this got on brand release. It it really is, and and now we've um, everybody's voted, and they want mm-hmm. um, they they picked a group. Tell me about this group. Who who is uh, who are these? They have picked Larceny Inc., who Mm -hmm. are a bunch of escapees from Labyrinth's DNA scent process. Larceny Inc. is like a super 90s villain group. (laughs) They really are, right down to Trapdoor having a ponytail. Mm -hmm. um, Oh, and and one of those facial buttress masks. Yep. Yep. Uh, they they are definitely the the sort of group that you know somebody from Image Studios would have come up with. You you mean because one of them looks like Wolverine? Right. <laughs> I'm a, uh, I'm gonna, nobody looks like Wolverine. But. I'm gonna jump in here and try to. Or I'll, I'll dig around and and uh, pull that image up. But they they do look mm-hmm. they look pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah, they're they're a fun group of characters. Um, and, and it it covers your four basic food groups for superheroes. Yep. Your Absolutely. Grip, your speedster, your stretchy guy, and your teleporter. Yep. Your teleporter who has a ponytail and a technical staff that has energy blasts for no really well defined reason. Sure. Why not? Nice. They were really nineties with this. Yeah, they were very nineties group. <laughs> Thank Without you. Thank you, everybody, for. Uh, um, I w- sounds like we got our audio stuff under control, which means uh, a couple more clicks, and I'll ruin it all again for they, us. They've got a beef with an evil corporation. Yeah. You know, there's so there's you know medical testing and you know um, all oh, kinds. Oh, and they of... own a nightclub. Which right? yes. the stats for their nightclub are in the the Patreon documents you'll be receiving. Excellent. So. Well, so that is just like all the greatest hits. Um, right. uh, let's talk a little bit about their. Um, the, I, I remember we we unpacked some of this when we were looking at uh, the various groups that we were going to vote on, and my my mm-hmm. question was, can we? What? How did they get involved in this testing? Were they like? Was it against their will? Did they sign up? Did they? 
but they were all unwilling experimental subjects of of the you know evil corporations you know uh medical tests to try and uh find new ways to create obedient superhumans basically uh, that never works you always do the experimental obedience work first before first. the superpowers that's right yep. <laughs> that's right get I mean, them obedient then give them powers yeah. worst case scenario there you just end up with a really or yeah you end up with a large batch of really loyal interns right, right. <laughs> that's exactly. right and what do they they might uh get cranky about a sandwich or something or you know spill some mm-hmm. coffee they're not necessarily going to tear the city apart uh, exactly hey i want to say hi to scott alford uh i see um uh thank you everybody for your audio help and patience um i see jacob blackmon good to see you as well my friend um we've got a we've got a date with you sir we're gonna invite you on mm-hmm. to hang out with us maybe even next monday if you're up to it but um so I'll yes out in front of the whole group man i love it i love to, you know no, no pressure just all the pressure <laughs> um but uh but yeah so so we've got this this group of um you know kind of um uh, cranky, uh, super-powered uh, miscreants from the '90s, mm-hmm. and uh, they're they're hang- they have a club, which I kind of like. I mean, that's I kind of right. I want a they're club. They're extreme. Yeah, mm-hmm. they're they're extreme. They're flavor blasted. Um, what? <laughs> <laughs> um, we're gonna create sort of a scenario. Um, maybe talk about complications and. Mm-hmm. Uh, I did mm-hmm. want to open with this question, and um, <laughs> Josie says PL two interns. Yes, exactly. Uh, wow, those are some buff interns. Yeah, right. they are pretty. That's pretty. Yeah, pretty strong. Um, it's high school art class all over again. Sorry, Jacob. I mean, I'm not really, and neither was your <laughs> high school art teacher. Um, let's see. Uh, how many of them? Uh, how many of them wear roller skates and fanny packs? Says Alex Thomas. Oh, those are 80s characters. Oh, yeah, no. Roller blades are 90s. Right. That's very true. That Did you two ever rollerblade? Yeah, no. I was actually really good at it. <laughs> I never did. Yeah, no, I think uh, I just always no. worried my, my ankles would be too weak. and they yeah. just My ice skating skills translated really well. <gasps> oh, that's right. Indeed. That's right. Um, yeah, so there you go, Alex Thomas. We're talking uh, roller blades. And what's the fanny pack equivalent? I mean, fanny packs were still well, a thing in the 90s. I was going to say, right, in the 90s, there was all the characters who had pouches. Yeah, pouches, pouches, pouches. Yeah. Liz Korst says, what about flannel shirts tied around the waist? Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, I've got definitely. a flannel shirt tied around my waist right now. <laughs> that's right? not weird. We are in the Northwest. I mean, that's... I was uh, going to say. It's a prerequisite, for sure. It's where the 90s came from and retreated to. <laughs> yeah, 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 never <laughs> left. And that just sits here sort of covered in moss. Uh, right, just sort of sits there kind of brooding. <laughs> and, and damp. Um, <laughs> uh, Pook says, and short sleeve shirts uh, over uh, long sleeve shirts. Well, I again, I wear that now. <laughs> I have long sleeve mm-hmm. shirt under... Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm wearing this uh, Jinko sure. jeans. That's... Why is everybody coming right at us today? They really know, are. Right? It's like they know us or something. Backwards baseball hats. Okay, sure, sure. I always kind of yeah, think of yeah. that. They are extreme. They are extreme. Yeah, yeah. 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 There's definitely there's some Indeed. kind of some kind of um, uh, uh, flavor based creature that's like yeah, yeah. have some of this. Well, and... and Claymation. Yes. yes. And that's exactly why uh, Larceny Inc. ended up being sort of classic <laughs> characters was by the time we got around to doing uh, third edition and uh, the new edition of Freedom City and all of that other stuff, they were looking really dated <laughs> as characters, <laughs> for one thing. A bit. And, you know, because we were advancing the, the timeline <laughs> a bit, they were just a group of characters who had a who clearly had a very short lifespan. You know, either they, you know, were good enough crooks that they made a big enough score that they were finally able to retire and get out of the business, or they finally screwed up um, and the, you know, giant evil corporation backed up by the even bigger giant evil conspiracy that was after them finally caught up to them. Absolutely. Uh, So it just seemed pretty unlikely that these guys were still, you know, like, hanging out you know however you know 15 plus years later finally got that obedience programming right right for all we know you Actually, know I'm... this is a good jumping off point for a feature we wanted to mention mm. coming up on the patreon yeah 
Uh, so we we heard everybody's feedback about wanting like updates to find out what the characters have been doing since their their descriptions in first and second edition. Uh, so one of the support articles we're going to release each month once we hit five hundred dollars a month is sort of a where are they now update for the characters. Yep. So in addition to learning about the world, you'll also get updates from whichever characters we're updating that month. So fun. I love that. And um, Matthew Tyler has a question um, uh, about uh, where are the California raisins now? Uh, they're making fun of the fact that I said food-based creatures, but that was kind of a big deal mm -hmm. in the 90s. Um, yeah, you laugh. Yeah, it really had, was. Like, talking Capri Sun pouches and stuff. Seriously, <laughs> I mean, you know. I feel like that was a real thing. Was that a real thing? I, mm -hmm. It sounds very real. Dunkaroos were a real thing, and yes. the, didn't the kangaroo have a pocket full of frosting? <gasps> yeah. Is that, yeah. did we do that to... That seems unsanitary. Right. It really does. I don't know does. how they got a kangaroo into every package, but that's why uh, they're endangered now. Yeah, but mm -hmm. the frosting was so warm. Um, <laughs> let's see. Uh, Jacob says, I love that idea. Where are they now is a fantastic idea. You know, it's such a good idea, and yeah. we will take credit for it, but it actually came from y'all. Yeah. I mean, the, the great thing about the Patreon is we can pivot really fast and make adjustments yes. based on what people want. I mean, we, we hadn't planned on doing Larceny Inc., but people kept asking about Larceny Inc. Mm -hmm. That is true. You know, the Chris, came in. The Vogue came we in. Were, and, yeah. Mm -hmm. We I was, were ready to move on to the past with the Golden Age Crime League. That's Which right. Well, are really cool. You know what kind of, I do, too, and and, uh, and there are definitely people who ha, um, who kind of threw in for that and, and as we look at the overall um, sort of sentiment mm -hmm. around the Patreon. But really, it, it underscores, you bring up a, a point that is... Um, I think important to to recognize, and that is we get to do things fairly quickly. We get to pivot real fast yeah. to that stuff because we're not we're not planning six months to a year in advance of print mm -hmm. and all of that stuff. We get to do this stuff right now. That's really that's great. Um, Little bite sized bits of work that we can churn out in you know a week or two. Uh, mm -hmm. A little a little history refresher from Owen. I guess the uh, California raisins were eaten by the Kia hamsters in the. Uh, <laughs> Meme off Arena of Blood. Oh, oh. Another popular 90s television where, program. Where that... memes go to die. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. That's right. What about, I thought they were killed in the celebrity death matches of the uh, late 1990s. Oh, mm. those were tragic. Yes. Were tragic. Entertaining. But great and, ratings. Yeah, yeah, great ratings. Really fun to watch. But So uh, many promising actors lost. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, uh, Jacob Blackpunt says uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Hostess Vanilla Pudding Pies. Uh, yeah, they're delicious, and I still have a stockpile of them. <laughs> I believe it. You are a Mutant Some Masterminds fan. Uh, Bionic 6. <laughs> yeah, Bionic 6 was amazing. They had right? the best theme song, which I can still sing from memory, but I'm not going to subject it. Back when to that. cartoons had theme songs. Oh, yes. I, did, I meant Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I say Mutants and Masterminds. I probably did. Anyway, yeah. you're you're a fan of <laughs> you're a fan of both. Uh, luckily, yeah. Uh, indeed. But yeah, Bionic Six was great. I don't understand why it only ran in syndication. Oh, it says same with Dino Saucers. Uh, oh, it says <laughs> the celebrity the celebrity death matches were fake, not real blood sport. Oh, so they say. <laughs> Please, are you telling me Britney Spears is still alive today? I don't, I don't believe so. it. I don't believe it. Not in this timeline. Um, Jack Kirby character designs, yeah, yep, mm -hmm. yep, yep. Uh, biker yeah, you mice, can totally see it. Like yeah. bi biker mice from Mars. We are a family. <laughs> We're just gonna talk about every '90s superhero. I was team just gonna make say, <laughs> right? Yeah, we really are. They, we have, we have hit a. We're not gonna update the biker mice from. Well, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a copyright anybody's maintaining? <laughs> Teenage Mutants and Master okay. Turtles. Yes, thank you, Owen. That'll be that. I will now say that for the rest Ooh. of my living days. Mm -hmm. I know, right? <laughs> you might have done Control. a thing here. Um, all right. Well, so today we've also mm -hmm. promised to um, to put together sort of a scenario involving yeah. Larceny Inc. Mm -hmm. and uh, and taking some feedback from um, from our fans that are hanging out and chatting and I'll tell you what they are they are ready to do it they're ready to give right. some their feedback in hard like I mean obviously this has this has got to have something to do with flavor blasting technology <laughs> mm -hmm. absolutely some flavor blasting run amok now is this happening at the nightclub 
<laughs> like I know, actually, I mean, I could see this as like doing an adventure where they get the band back together for one last big score. Mm -hmm. Hey, okay, yeah. I like it. I Nick, see that. Nicholas ex well, is, ex is excited about the scenario. Right. Well, you know, you could see, you know, something like uh, something connected to one of the, the the companies that they were raiding back in the day mm -hmm. gets revived. Um, and, you know, because now nostalgia is big and everybody yes. wants to bring back, you know, something, you know. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, and so one of those things, you know, from one of the, the companies that they were ripping off back in the day, you know, is, is being brought back and they just can't resist the opportunity. Okay, what about this? What if, like our fan base, everybody in Earth Prime loves Larceny Inc. They're like a Robin Hood crew, as far mm. as any, anybody on the street knows. Right. So a biomedical company brings them back mm. and you get like either young clones or young actors who are given like technological equivalents of their powers mm -hmm. except now they're working for this company that is probably owned by the labyrinth right and the actual larceny ink come out of hiding to like put a stop to it right because they can't ruin their bad name like that yeah you can't you can't copyright a villain identity as far as i know that's so that's true so, you know, any, you know, so, corporate raider could exploit the hell out of it. So when all of a sudden, like a newer, edgier trap door is trying to sell you soda on mm -hmm. every channel. Mm -hmm. This is so good. This is great. Look, at uh, right? uh, so, like the heroes can get involved when they start seeing these commercials, like all over TV. And it's like, Larceny Inc., those villains my dad fought? Right? <laughs> right. Aren't those guys like really old? That's great, folks. Um, uh, weigh in um, uh, with ponytail and receding hairline. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the classic yeah, move. Yeah, you, you know, you know, the trapdoor still has the ponytail. But oh, now absolutely. He wears a baseball cap to you know hide the fact that he's got a receding hairline. I feel like at this point, Grab is probably like a middle-aged mom, but like an angry wine mom who's mm -hmm. over-invested in the PTA. <gasps> yes. Clearly, I see this vision in my mind of like um, uh, Harry, like somebody walking by, you know, a, a newspaper stand of sorts, and they're like, "Wait, what?" And then someone's looking at them like, "Didn't didn't you die? Are you?" <laughs> That's uh, courtesy of Liz Quartz. Um, Trapdoor right. energy drinks fall out of the bottom of flavor. Yeah. Oh, it's always oh, great when the heroes get caught in the middle of something, right? Oh, the heroes. How do the heroes get sucked in? They in, Do they investigate when they start seeing this villain team suddenly advertising all these mm -hmm. consumer products? Right. And then I guess along the way you discover, wait, these are just goofs they've dressed mm -hmm. in costumes who don't really know anything. Mm -hmm. And they're all playing out a role sure. on reality TV or something. Well, and especially once, you know, uh, the, the company that they're supposedly working for starts getting mm -hmm. hit by you know, mysterious robberies that are clearly, you know, Larceny Inc.'s M.O. But you know, those look like an advertising stunt or the company plays right? it off like they're advertising stunts. You know, I mean, and the company's weirdly cagey about it. Like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the heroes start looking into things and are like, are there two of these? <laughs> That's oh, and good. Then they're, they're caught in the middle as the real Larceny Inc. drops in on Mm -hmm. on their new imitators and starts a brawl. Right. And I have to imagine it's at some big public event because Larceny Inc. wants everyone to know these guys are fake. Oh, yeah. some kind of something palooza, like a big, uh, well, you it know. Could be a, it could even be a big public event at their old nightclub. <sighs> oh, that would be horrible. Matthew Tyler has the perfect title for a Larceny Inc. adventure, The Last Job. I mm -hmm. kind of like it. They're kind of coming at it. Yeah. The, um, uh, commercials that mesmerize someone says the final heist says Liz Quartz. Um, interesting. I like that. Uh, Owen throws Back in. Door. Uh, uh, <laughs> it's good. Good. Uh, Owen throws in um, villain themed sports bar. This is great stuff. Um, oh, yeah. Wouldn't it be great if somebody starts up a competitor to champions? Oh. Um, that's a villain themed sports bar. That's I, so good. I want to call it sinister, but now I'm just thinking it's like super mod and 
goth. Mm -hmm. Right. Or not mod, but super goth and uh, glam. Yeah, mm -hmm. glam. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And so, yeah, this is good stuff. Um, and so what when we're talking about this stuff, one of the things I love, and, and I've, I've, I've come to love it even more as, as I've kind of played around with creating my own characters and, and uh, operating in, in <laughs> certain, you know, um, uh, storylines, but it's the complications, right? So mm -hmm. we've, we've talked a little mm -hmm. bit about, like, age being a bit of a you know a bit of a complication like it's a they're, they're kind of <laughs> outside my experience <laughs> yeah same hard same yeah um uh but then there's also the notion of sort of being out of the game a bit right like mm -hmm. they're kind of just ent re-entering whether it's because they're fired up by uh how very dare you you know um mm -hmm. we'll show you uh but what are hey, some you kids get off my shtick yeah yeah, right. Right? yeah exactly um, and what, uh, you know, I, I'm curious from our group of, uh, contributors, tell us, um, some thoughts that you may have about, we've talked a little bit about maybe cosmetic, you know, scenarios like the receding hairline and ponytail. That is mm -hmm. certainly a limiting, mm -hmm. uh, that is limiting behavior for sure. Um, <laughs> but, um, bad guy chain, oh, wrong cider saloons, says Sean Vieira. They're talking about the, the food oh, the chain or the, <laughs> yeah. Yep. Uh, <laughs> Scott Alfred says, age, a complication. The future is now old people. I know, but those young people keep popping up all over the place. Um, tagline for the adventure, age and treachery, youth and skill. Who will win? I kind of like that. So always let's bet on age and treachery. Always. Always bet on age and treachery. Um, now you see why evil will always win. Because good <laughs> is, is dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so what, what are some, let's, let's kick off some, some complication talk. Like what, yeah. what are some other things we would so, put? Yeah. What comes into this adventure to, to screw things up for the heroes, mm -hmm. probably more than the villains. Right. Right. Well, you know, you have to look at, because we don't know the heroes complications, whatever yeah, they may be. We kind of have to look at the complications that come into play from the villains and may potentially connect to the heroes. And the interesting, the, for me, when we're talking about um, larceny, the, the big complication for them is their um, issues with the labyrinth. Mm -hmm. You know, the labyrinth was hunting them for a long time. And if, you know, the scenario presumes that larceny basically sort of disappeared, you know, into, you know, their equivalent of the witness protection program, you know, they adopted new identities and, you know, vanished, you know, um, the fair, fact that they appear back on uh, the labyrinth's radar has got a potential for a big complication oh. in this scenario where they come back just to try and, you know, avenge themselves against these new, you know, fakes who are, you know, using their identities. And then in the middle of that, that's when the labyrinth hit squad shows up uh, and has decided to take these guys out once and for all. And now the heroes have a three-way fight. <laughs> I like it. So how do you set it up so the heroes have to rescue Larceny Inc? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What what moral compulsion do you give the heroes or how do you do that without beating them over the head? Right. Uh, I don't, you know, one of the interesting things is the one of the notions you mentioned, Crystal, about, you know, Grab being sort of this suburban mom and all of that of, uh, you know, having the sort of interlude of, you know, when the heroes are intervening, who knows, perhaps in fact, the heroes are asked to intervene by uh, Larceny's loved ones, you oh, know, like who are like, you know, our mom is you know, like <laughs> kind of high strung, you know, <laughs> and, uh, you know, she saw this th ad on TV and lost it. <laughs> You know. We haven't seen her since. Right. You know. <gasps> right. Oh. I wonder now. It's, you... like, oh, it's wow, like two kids someone... with their piggy bank being like, right. can we hire you? Oh, like, that. Oh, she's someone's mom. Like. <laughs> it's like That's oh. interesting. Oh, I love that. Now, would we get other, uh, would any of the other children get involved potentially? Like, do they know of each other or are they separate? Like, I don't know. If, they, if they've gone their own ways, they probably don't know each other anymore. Right. They probably right. may, may not have seen each other yeah. in years. They might. 
I mean, Brav might be the only one with kids. Do you think Trapdoor and Getaway ended up settling down together? Because we wrote them as falling in that love. Could be. You know, I mean, we could have written it that way. They could have settled down and maybe now they're divorced. Ooh, oh, you know? oh, yeah. But there's like that. But there's that, you know, yeah. still something there. Like, you know, is this what gets them back together? Speaking of other complications. Yeah, because they, what brought them together was that thrill of all the crime. And then, you know, they settled into that boring old pattern afterwards and just right. like, couldn't deal with normal life. Oh, you know, I've got, there's something coming in from chat that I kind of like. So Liz Court's uh, thrown in kind of bad PR as a complication, which is kind of funny. But then mm -hmm. Scott layered on this uh, piece of that, which is a complication for the heroes early in the scenario, could be bad press coverage as they combat the new Larceny Inc. with uh, uh, J. Jonah Jameson type character saying that all the heroes are aiding the elite to keep their money, you know, from reaching the poor of the city. And like, it's got, it's got that sort of lefty yeah. socialist bent to it, um, um, which I kind of dig. Uh, let's see. Liz Court says, for safety's sake, uh, Larceny Inc. had to cut ties to each other. Sure. I think that that makes mm -hmm. sense to me, too. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I feel yeah. like... Uh... Smash is probably probably in an institution or some kind of support system at this point. Right. right. He's presumably being cared for in some yeah. way. And that, again, is an interesting sort of scenario of, yeah. you know, if he has a caretaker, you know, who says, um, these weird people came and abducted this guy, <laughs> you know, but he seemed to know them. Yeah. You know. He seemed really happy to see them. He was always such a nice, gentle guy. Right. I could see that. He, then, of course, he smashed the entire wall down on his way <laughs> out. You know, I could see like a long period of time where he was just very quiet and sat in front of a watercolor painting and painted sort of mm -hmm. silently, you know, in a in, in a <laughs> institution of some sort, and then was awakened. Um, you know, as far as like people come and they're, they're getting the band back together, and uh, you know, and he oh, smashes yeah, yeah. the world on those way out. Yeah. Yeah, I guess for context, do we want to like talk about the characters at all? I, I that would help. Yeah. Yeah, so Trapdoor is ostensibly the leader, as much as like a band of super thieves has a leader. Has a leader, uh, yeah. He's got the power to make a teleportation portal, but it's got to be in a rectangular frame. Right. So he can turn a door into a gate somewhere else, to another door, uh, or a window, or mm -hmm. like if you smash through the wall, but the studs are left, he can turn that rectangle into a, a teleport. Cool. Uh... Uh, his girlfriend in the write-up is Getaway, who is a speedster, who yep. is mostly in it for the thrills. She likes adventure. Uh, mm -hmm. Grab is a woman with stretchy powers, and she's painted as being very controlling, very manipulative, very self-centered, mm -hmm. which is why I thought PTA mom. <laughs> it's natural. Naturally, yeah. <laughs> People like that tend to project a lot on their kids, I assume. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Smash is their their brick, their super strong character, but he's he's emotionally stunted, which is mm -hmm. like his his intellectual development stalled out around like childhood. Yeah. So that's why he was in the this institution to begin with. Yeah. Here and he's mostly being cared for by his his co criminals gotcha uh, scott brings up an interesting little twist here um a turn of events that could happen later in the campaign could be that the heroes join forces with the older larceny inc to save the newer versions from labyrinth <laughs> mm -hmm. i like oh, that yeah because yeah. chances are the new versions don't even know about the labyrinth <laughs> right yeah <laughs> Could you see a, a scenario where they're doing they're doing their you know PR marketing shtick and then suddenly mm -hmm. like labyrinth hit squad shows up and they're just like whoa they really they really invested some money in this particular you know situation right. and, wow, of course, they're making this fight look real yes you, you could also it being the labyrinth you could also end up with a scenario where they uh, they think they're going to save the new versions from the labyrinth but of course the new versions are thoroughly brainwashed. Um, and the labyrinth is just using them as bait. Um, <gasps> yeah, to draw on to the original ones. Lure the originals into a trap. Which, at that point, you've really got to ask why they need the originals. And I think it's that is, hard yeah. when they have duplicates. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm thinking in that case, it's not clones, it's people with like, you know, power suits or mm -hmm. rigs or something Artificial like that. Artificial powers. That, yeah. That 
yeah. you know, give them a cool approximation, but aren't as good as mm -hmm. genetically modified. And so the yeah. Labyrinth wants them back because of their DNA? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, interesting. Wow, that was great. That was, uh, yeah, Scott, thanks for that. That kind of led us through this really yeah, this... interesting storyline here. <laughs> um, folks, feel free to dive in. Um, and, and sh Labyrinth wanting their DNA mm -hmm. and Grab having a kid, you really opened up the possibility of introducing mm -hmm. larceny babies. Right. <laughs> right. Like like the X babies, but yes. for Larceny Inc. Yeah. Larceninies. You interrupt the uh, cloning process and they all fall out as like adorable, as super marketable toddlers. Mm -hmm. Well, that's interesting. So if Larceny Inc. has has had or, you know, a few of the um, of the members have had kids or have children, are those mm -hmm. kids impacted at all by the fact that their parents maybe? are? Maybe. I maybe. Mean, we're kind of unclear. Yeah. Right. I mean, their genes were tinkered with, so it's mm -hmm. possible they pass on something. Yeah, does, does stretchiness transmit like, is that a dominant or recessive trait? Right, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Larceny Jr. Is it, is it like red hair? <laughs> Jonesy says Larceny Jr. I like that. Um, uh, yeah, so that's that's an interesting one. You know, maybe all the children, you know, that mm -hmm. uh, that were sort of that generation are, are all flavor blasted. They all come out. I like the reverse of Junior Larceny. <laughs> junior Larceny, yeah. <laughs> that's good. I love it. Because then they can be the junior larceny squad. Oh, and Casey Stevens says, larceny babies, they'll steal your heart. <laughs> I love it. And all of your other valuables. And all your other valuables. Much anything not nailed down. Mm -hmm. uh, Scott says, a labyrinth could want their DNA because power suits are subject to EMPs. Okay, all right. A clone oh, yeah. army oh, yeah, of larceny yeah. would allow yeah, them I mean, to extend their... Yeah, I mean, innate superpowers are clearly superior. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Mean, manufacturing a bunch of super exoframes, that costs a lot of money. And but plus... injecting a bunch of cloning cylinders with, you know, some CRISPR... Right, pretty cheap. Super yeah, easy. absolutely. And plus, everybody wants to do their villainy naked. You don't want to be all encumbered by all yeah. that. Stuff. I mean, right. and really, biotech is where the you know labyrinth is really invested. That is, that is you know, they're the not so much is. about the hard tech. Yeah, Alex Alma says, "Just rad babies." <laughs> yeah. I love it. Gnarly, totally gnarly. Um, oh. Okay, okay, no, no, I'm trying to name the uh, larceny babies. Like, mm -hmm. smash it, smush. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, sort of trapdoor. I don't. Uh. Peekaboo. <laughs> All right. Instead of getaway. I mean, I kind of wanted to sound the same. I guess tag, but tag. Mm -hmm. Hide and seek. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like that it suggests that the powers might be a little different um, for some reason but oh wait 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 uh, Matthew Tyler says here's a possible twist one of the new Larceny Inc. members could be related to former Freedom City Mayor Franklin Moore or former Police Commissioner Roy Alquist wow Matthew oh, you really Iron Age legacy going on yeah <laughs> smush mouth trap door says Alex Thomas <laughs> Interesting. So, yeah. So, so then right now what we're looking at is, um, th this situation, the scenario, um, Scotch. Oh, that's it. That's good. That is it. Uh, sorry. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> it was beautiful. A beautiful thing to watch. <laughs> I love it. Okay. So who do we have? So, uh, um, what are the other babies? Uh, what I'm having trouble figuring out is grab. Mm. Nab? Yeah, right. Or grabby. Grabby hands. Yeah, that's a yeah, what do that's you think, work. chat? We're looking yeah, we're looking for a suitable um uh Yeah, instead of trapdoor hopscotch, instead of smash patty cake. Mm. Good, okay, okay. Instead of getaway, it's hide and seek. Mm-hmm. Uh, Crystal Matthew Tyler says Crystal's exoframe reference reminds me of Exo Squad. <laughs> we are not going to get derailed onto that. Right, we are not going down that rabbit hole. <laughs> nice try, Mr. Tyler. Um, because that that road always leads to Captain Simeon and the Space Monkeys, and I'm not going there again. It's too soon. Too I soon. Broken already. I mean. <laughs> Liz Court says flex with two X's. 
Now that is extreme. That is that extreme. Is extreme. Yeah, that is very extreme. Mm -hmm. But you can't go to three X's because these are preteens. That's too extreme. That yeah. is too extreme. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I don't you I don't know why, but it's interestingly enough, three X's seem a little less. I remember extreme. three X. Yeah, I mean, like mm -hmm. in our modern time, I just it's just we not can't a have three X's in this. We're not naming a dragon for God's sake, right? right? <laughs> Next thing they're going to bring in apostrophes, and then they'll be all over with. I then yeah, then it's just a mess. What are you a Cree? <laughs> I was just <laughs> thinking of that. I was like, what? A that suggests aliens, and this is just going to be a mess. Oh. Um, because this is a '90s baby. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Triple <laughs> extreme. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Yeah. So so we've got. Um, I'm wondering if there are other hero based complications or or so we've kind of painted yeah. this really great scenario what are mm -hmm. some other <laughs> oh. alex Thomas. I mean, you have to you look into opportunities to work the heroes in to the, yeah. the scenario you know based on how it looks yeah, yeah. like if you're if you're one of your heroes is a teacher in their day job then mm -hmm. obviously one of their students is you know grabs grabs son or daughter or or mm -hmm. I don't know what the gender neutral for child is. Right. Child, I guess just I child, guess. offspring. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, if uh, they have a hero has a, a day job working in PR, maybe they're working for this new corporation or oh, somebody yeah. they know is. And, you know, so they're adjacent to this whole new, you know, um, new Larceny Inc. scenario in some way, you know. If any of the characters are connected to the labyrinth already, then they've got a ready-made complication that links in as far yeah. as that goes. If any of them are legacy characters, then their mentor might have fought Larceny Inc. and asked mm -hmm. them to, to get Looking involved to because, you know, these guys are supposed to be a lot older. Right. I like that. So Scott says, the heroes could have secretly been hired by Labyrinth to bring out the older Larcy Inc. by uh, failing to defeat the newer versions. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I was thinking, too, there could be some kind of an... Um, an the heroes for hire. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that's true. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I mean, one of the great things about uh, game mastering an organization like Labyrinth is pretty much whatever thing ends up happening in the adventure, that's what Labyrinth intended. That's I love that. That was, that, that was their scheme all along. Mm -hmm. I love that. I absolutely love that. Yeah, I, I was thinking more and more about Labyrinth and kind of how that, how that plays into the hero's motives or, you know, I mean, could, could there, you know, as you were saying, Steve, they can, you know, Labyrinth can kind of play the role of any kind of thing, mm -hmm. you know, it, yep. from having you know tricking the heroes into the kids coming and saying please help us you know that kind of thing or that's great yeah yeah alex thomas says everything is proceeding as i have foreseen it yeah exactly 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 <laughs> i love it yeah. and we're gonna capture I mean, we're gonna capture that, that audio awesome. crystal and we're gonna make it a ringtone that was the best <laughs> That was the best laugh. Sorry, Steve. Oh, God, Go ahead. At least get my witch's cackle, not my my mastermind chuckle. All right. Before we leave, at the end of the show, we will do. Um, we will get a nice, clear capture of Crystal which is, of Crystal's witch's cackle, and um, that'll be a freebie for all y'all. You can make that your uh, your ringtone. You <laughs> can't say those things to Troy. Really no, can't. you really can't. You really can't. You can't please, inspire please, me in Troy, don't way. put me in a situation where I have to accept 50 bucks from you. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the thing. Every time you use a phone, you have to send Crystal 50 bucks. So um, I love it. Anyway, Steve, I'm sorry. We... <laughs> oh, I was just going to say that, you know, and of course with, with the Labyrinth, you know, they're, you know, this giant secret conspiracy um, so they, they also just can play out depending on what kind of game you're running, you know, the heroes may not know anything about them either. And, uh, there may be, you know, some either mentor or person in their life or whatever, you know, but just some crazy conspiracy theory, you know, where somebody's like, no, really, I'm telling you there, there's this, you know, organization that's existed in secret for a thousand years and they control all of these things. And they, you know, they are clearly behind this. They right, were involved, man. The company know. that makes flavor blasted Mountain 
treacle. <laughs> are a secret by an society. Conspiracy. Yeah. Oh, I love run that. Run by treacle. a bull. Right. Run by a, a minotaur. Okay. <laughs> sure. sure. This is and so his, good. And his lieutenant is a guy with gorilla arms. Mm-hmm. I guess he's armed and dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And and also that has to be a product. Mountain treacle. Flavor blasted. Mountain Flavor blasted. Flavor mountain blasted mountain the latest of the mountain yes. treacle line um, yeah. for you. Clear and mountain family. treacle never took off. No, <laughs> it didn't. It was a real disappointment. Yeah. Um, I. I, I really wish Mountain Treacle Baja Blast was available outside of Taco Hut. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Have you had the, have you had the Canadian Mountain Treacle? It it tastes really different. It's different. It, it's different. <laughs> Abu says boo. Well, no treacle. You get. I will not share my treacle with you, uh, even if my treacle pouch says share with a friend. I will not share it with a. You don't need to know what your treacle pouch says. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, I can never get the straw into the treacle pouch without spraying it all over myself. Exactly. You make a big mess. Uh, Pook says Mountain Treacle is a shitty hipster American brand. <laughs> Thank you, Apuk. Um, I, yeah, but, I, but Flavor Blasted Mountain Treacle is a retro hipster brand. That's mm-hmm. right. That is yes. absolutely right. Um, and can be enjoyed ironically. Mm-hmm. You don't I, have to actually like it. You just pretend to like it, and people don't think less of you. Yeah, you just always have a, a pouch of the mountain treacle nearby and be like, oh, look at this, everybody. This is so gross, and they're eating it. <laughs> yeah. Um, wow, we have really, we've really done a thing. Um, mm-hmm. uh, we've got product. We've got drama. We've got uh, characters and, uh, a, mm-hmm. you know, a, some some room for the heroes to maneuver and, and sort, you know, sort of we, uh, solve problems. We need to bring so, in, like, an animated mascot somehow. Mm-hmm. I am thinking that exact same thing. <gasps> oh, like the animated cheetah mascot is the secret mastermind working for Labyrinth. I <laughs> love it. I love that. Um, like Lester Llama, the extreme spokesperson for right? Mountain Treacle. What were big animals in the 90s? Like, what is oh, the, you know, what? Man. What were big animals in it's the like, 90s? It's like, I'm thinking like Lisa you know, like Frank. Kikachus but back then? Wolves were huge. <laughs> you had wolves, wolves on t-shirts. Orcas. Yes. Yeah, sure. Oh, yeah, yeah, I could fight a, far- I could fight a cartoon orca. <gasps> <laughs> oh right, yeah, yeah. Let's. Good. I like that. A, a big. Um... Oh, oh it looks like, like a uh... episode where he fights a dolphin. <laughs> <laughs> Owen says, "Hi, I'm Monty Monitor, the mm-hmm. spokesperson for Labyrinth. Uh, welcome to Burrito Barn. Would you like to try our new extreme melon berry flavor of Mountain Would you Treacle? Like salsa with that. <laughs> <laughs> I love it." Or extreme blue raspberry salsa. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I think the important thing for us to take away from this is don't folks want us to get to 500 on the Patreon so that we can do this all the time? Wow, Steve. Yeah. That is so true. This is good what work, you'll Steve. get. This is really good. Yeah, I mean, this is exactly what you'll get. I think, I think what they David- I think what everybody's really learned right now is they don't want Crystal screwing around with their cannon. <laughs> <laughs> I, but you know, I think what they want is for you just to to reimagine, uh, you know, the best parts of their childhood, put put it together in sort of an adventure that they can then, you know, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, participate in and and uh, either you know destroy or. Uh, uh, or you know, promulgate. Uh, look, oh, uh, Sean Duggan, you have a really great question, and I'm going to bring that up here in in three minutes. So set your watch, Sean, which I'm sure you All probably right. have a stopwatch yeah. there. But um, yeah, Jonesy oh. drops a link to the Patreon. Thank you. That's Patreon.com. Yes, Mutants A and D Masterminds, and um, check that out. We'll be putting um, Professor Sion up today, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, and then we roll right into Larceny Inc., which is uh, do we want to? Um, we've got oh, I would say about you know eight or so minutes um, uh, left in our broadcast day. Are there mm-hmm. some other things that we want to to kind of tie a bow on our adventure with mm-hmm. Larceny Inc.? I mean, I'll point out we have stats for cartoon characters, 
in mm-hmm. Freedom City already. We do. You can ah. borrow the Toon Gang statistics for Lester the uh, Extreme Orca. <gasps> for other living cartoons. Yes. I, I really want the mascot suit of Lester <laughs> the Extreme Orca. Like, just, you know. He's so got, ex- like, hot like a hot pink Hawaiian shirt with yes, he does. and blue squiggles. Oh, and what about those for no apparent reason? What about those sunglasses with no lens but they had the little like the slats like the slats? Aren't those more of an 80s thing? Are yeah, they? I'm not sure if they're 80s or 90s. Okay, yeah. gotcha, gotcha. But he's got a he's got a disc man with earphones even though he doesn't have, have ears. ears. <laughs> <laughs> just... <laughs> I love it. I love the fact that he's so extreme he doesn't need water. Ah, and he's a surfer, dude. Right? Oh, this is so good. This is so good. And Jonesy, you are right. We are so close Man, to 500. I was, I was I was really hoping we'd have time to do one of these for the Psy family, but I guess we are. We had too much fun dreaming up flavor blasted blue raspberry mountain treacle. <laughs> <laughs> I I just, uh, I, I, I can't... Um, I, there's so much goodness here. I'm trying to think of like what is the thing that I want to plead for someone to draw. Um, <laughs> I, you know, I throw it out there into the world, and if it comes back to us, you know, we're meant to. Uh, mm. Let, to, let to the care. artists find their own inspiration. That's yeah. right. Don't, yeah. Don't try to force this. Don't Troy. try to force it. Don't try to force it's it. It's organic. Yeah. Yes, exactly. And I much pr- like flavor blasted blue raspberry mountain treacle. <laughs> you almost made me draw my microphone. <laughs> I was literally just as it came out of my mouth. I was gonna say, and, G- and like my favorite flavor of. <laughs> oh, that's so good. It tastes five uh, percent treacle. <laughs> I love this, and I love this especially because moms love it. <laughs> moms approve. I love it. Um, one of the things dads is... don't understand it. <laughs> <laughs> this ain't for dads, Dad. Um, uh, what I love about this is that we've been doing this for so long that our humor cycles are aligning. So we're kind of <laughs> <laughs> betwixt uh, the three of us. Um, that explains why I'm feeling bloated and crampy. <laughs> right? Yeah. And just laughing and laughing. So here's a question Sean brings up, and it's actually uh, it's actually a good one. Finally, thanks, Sean. Okay. No, that's not what I meant to say. Uh, it's a really great <laughs> oh, question. Oh, it's I just, actually I, a good one. It's so funny. I started out, here's a question, and actually it's good, as though it wouldn't have been <laughs> otherwise. So apologies, Sean. All of your commentary is uh, top drawer, top shelf. Um, I was wondering if I could get an answer to a question uh, regarding immunities. Now, this question comes from the subreddit. Oh, um, okay. And it's uh, we subreddit? We do. Yeah, we do indeed. Um, specifically, I was wondering whether a character with a 10-point immunity to heat would also be immune to fire damage or whether they would still suffer some damage from taking a fireball to the face. Um, I believe once you get to 10 points, that is immunity to a specific damage type. I believe I you like are I correct. I want to look that up to be double sure, mm-hmm. which for some reason my rule book is... Yeah. I mean, generally the answer oh. is probably yes, but um, yeah, 10 point immunity is, is pretty much one damage descriptor uh, for the most part. Yep, Co- one common power descriptor such as cold, electricity, fire, radiation, or weather. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, that's actually that's actually like the whole descriptor. So if you had fire that did something else, like fire that caused exhaustion, mm-hmm. you would be right. immune to that, to that as well. Uh, for five <laughs> point immunity to fire, you're immune to fire damage and fireballs to the face. There you go. Um, that's uh, a great question. And Alex Thomas says, you're right, Crystal. Um, oh. You know, Crystal, you should do this for a living. Um, uh, well, uh, Alex I had to right. look it up right Must in front of true. you. I love it. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. I love it. Um, 10 would be all effects in a common type, says Sean. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so, correct. like, if you're immune to cold, then you're immune to being frozen in place with cold damage. I don't know if you'd be immune to ice shackles at the AGM call. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but you'd be immune to like being placed in a hibernetic trance by a cryogenic manser. So Sean says ten would be all effects in a common type. Five is just damage. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, what, Jacob? What is this true? Has um, he already flavor blasted something? He he has. Um. Uh. <laughs> he he says I've just drawn larceny babies. <gasps> 
<laughs> oh no. Yeah. Um, what have we done? What? Yeah. Uh, something <laughs> glorious. I think. I think what we've done is put together some bonus material for the Patreon. Heck right. uh, yes. Um, I, honestly, though, true. I mean, I, yeah, that, that's good stuff. Um, <laughs> Uh, uh, you know, so Jacob, because we're nearing the end and, uh, of the program, um, oh, Matthew Tyler says, I was getting a strong Gleek snarf vibe from the whole mascot thing. Mm. Oh, that's yeah. something, yeah. yeah, absolutely. I, I feel like, um, like Gleek and snarf, like, uh, oh, snarf is like Thundercats, that mm -hmm. snarf. Mm -hmm. snarf. Gleek is the blue monkey from Space Ghost. Gotcha. Is, uh, no, is Gleek is the blue twins? The Wonder Twins. Okay, yes. gotcha, gotcha. Blip, Blip is the one from Space Ghost. There we go. That's a lot of little blue monkeys in there. Right. They really are. They really are. Blip um, is a monkey with a jetpack. Yep. You know. Oh, that's right. Gotcha. Uh, Jones, yes. Me to forget the jetpack, the quintessential right. difference between monkeys. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Larson... Everybody knows monkeys have a jetpack. Apes don't. Apes don't exactly. It's a key difference. Uh, here's a, 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 to kind of round out Sean Doggins' um, uh, uh, conversation. As we near the end of our program, uh, Sean says, "I have a vague memory of second edition saying immunity to any of the descriptors was immunity to all. So, like flaming sword might have fire and slashing, and mm -hmm. well, those would be two different damage descriptors. The, yeah, as far as yeah. That I goes. mean, it's." I mean, that's something that specific is going to be kind of a GM call. So, like, right. if you shoot nuclear ice beams at somebody and you're who is immune to ice, eh, I mean, maybe they just do half damage. Maybe they're completely uh, immune. I mean, it's going to depend on how, how yeah. much it comes up. Yeah. <laughs> Scott Alfred said, having worked with monkeys, I would never trust one with a jetpack. Nor should you. Nor should you. You know, and, and I've worked with apes, and I wouldn't trust them with a jetpack. So I think monkeys is the way to go. And mm. I'm telling you, I've worked with humans, and I wouldn't trust them with a jetpack. So I, I can just tell you right now, no lemurs. No. Oh no, yeah, definitely no, no jet powered lemurs. No, no jet. Ugh, I just that would just be so much. And someday I've got to tell the story of the time I thought fought like thirty lemurs. Mm -hmm. Yes, you do. But unfortunately, but not today. It's it, too late. It yeah. just literally it, the the uh, the time just turned three. It's um, we have to say adieu to everyone. Uh, thank everybody for watching. Thank you two for hanging out and having some fun. We have we did some work today. We did some real work mm -hmm. today, and uh, yeah. talked about these, it. Go ahead. These juice pouches don't flavor blast themselves. No, they That's don't. So they don't. And um, you know if. If I have to enjoy Mountain Treacle, I <laughs> want to enjoy it with you two and everybody who is watching uh, and listening. And uh, thanks again um, for for having some fun. This is super. This is super enjoyable for all of us, and we know you enjoy it too. Um, we look forward to uh, what's happening on the Patreon, which you can visit at or at uh, Patreon.com/slash Mutants A and D Masterminds. And um, you know, I think we're probably going to want to share. Um, some you know larceny babies, um, some mm -hmm. artwork. If I'm if I'm to understand, and um, we'll get together with some folks to do some planning. Maybe we'll have a guest on next week, which I would love to see. Um, but uh, until then, now, uh, Crystal, you, uh, Crystal and Steve, what do you have to share before we pull the plug on the day? Uh, <laughs> well, my DC comic Love Is a Battlefield is now available from all major yeah. comics retailers. It, it like so it fits. Physically available? Oh yes, physically available. Yes. Oh, you can my. buy six copies. It is a delight. I'm gonna buy oh, seven. I'm so excited about that. Now and and you're are you going to be appearing on a program later to this day? Oh, I will. Thank you for reminding me. You bet. Uh, it has been a busy morning. Yeah. Uh, I'll be on Alex Thomas's uh, Untold Stories project this evening. Uh, nice. This afternoon, in about an hour. Yeah, in about an hour. So, um, and that'll be a live stream. Um, mm -hmm. You, yeah. Uh, oh, truly enjoyable. I really, you got to get over and check out uh, what they've got going on there. Um, great, uh, uh, just in general, but uh, it's always a joy to watch Crystal kind of get in there and, and uh, be a character and have some fun. Um, mm -hmm. Steve, how about you? You got anything you'd like to share with the world? Just, you know, tell folks to, uh, you know, tell all of your, you know, friends and gaming associates about, you know, the Eminem Patreon, you know, and about how much fun and exciting content we've got and stuff coming up. Uh, and the 
better it does, the more we can do. Heck a yes, and I'm not going to let you walk out the door without telling us about your Patreon. Oh, and uh, yeah, I have a Patreon at um, uh, patreon.com slash Steve Kenson, where I am doing things for that other superhero role-playing game that I write things for. Um, and folks can definitely check that out as well for fun and exciting monthly content. Right on. So all the all the um, the hero and fun that you could ever hope for, um, just sort of compacted into two uh, remarkable human beings. And then there's me, and I'm just sort of a disembodied voice saying thank you all for watching. Thank you, uh, Crystal and Steve, for hanging out. And we will see you next Monday. But you could hang out with me and Owen Casey Stevens on uh, for Thursdays. That's we should, do that. two, we should do that for sure. Uh, that's two p.m. Um, it's on Thursday. We call it Thursday with Owen Casey Stevens, and it's me and Owen Casey Stevens. It's a heck of a lot of fun, and we look forward to that as well. We'll see you then. Until uh, until then, you know, um, um, keep your treacle flavor blasted. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, everyone. You made it sound uh, dirty, Troy. Right? I feel dirty. <laughs> How does he do that? I just I can't stop.